What's going on everybody? Liam O'Reilly, Vermont Economic Realtor with Jerry Riley Real Estate. I hope you're doing well. Bank of America is predicting a housing crash that mimics the 1980s compared to 2008. We're going to go through their reasoning. I'm going to also take a look at the equities, how much equity people have in their homes versus uh, the debt that they hold. And then we're also going to look at a great map that shows what happened in 2008, how quickly home prices declined compared to what's going on today in the housing market. So let's get right into it. So right off the bat here, Bank of America an an analysts see no housing crash like 2008. Now they talk about what was going on before 2008 that we've talked about quite a bit on this channel. Number of housing units started. So there was a huge build running up to 2008, which, which isn't similar to today. Um, but really what I wanna focus on is how this is similar to the 1980s. So if we take a look at that, Back then, back in the 80s, inflation was running high in the years leading up to 1980. The Consumer Price Index, or CPI, closely watched, closely watched inflation gauge jumped to 14.8% on an annual basis. Now they have here the inflation rate leading up to the 1980s with a peak at 14.6 here, or I guess it must be 14.8 or whatever, whatever it is, it's somewhere around that 14.6, 14.8 range in the 1980s. So similarly, we, we are experiencing a similar period of inflation today, as I'm sure many of you know, if we just take a look at the chart, we see inflation spiked way up to around 9% in 2022. And now, now it's come back down to around 3%, but it's still, it's still higher than what the Fed wants. So again, high inflation plagued the 80s, similar to what's going on today. Now, when they say that the housing market crashed in the 1980s, really what they mean is that it crashed relative to inflation. So if we take another look at the CPI chart, we see that CPI remained hot through the beginning of the 80s. So CPI was at 13%, then 14% in 1980, and it goes all the way down to 3.2% in 1983 here, right at the end of 1983, and then spikes back up. So basically, what that means is you're losing purchasing power with your dollar, the dollar is losing value. Now, if home prices are not increasing at the same rate of inflation, then you're losing uh, value to, to inflation, right, then your, your dollar doesn't go as far with purchasing, um, basically, the dollar is losing value, and home prices aren't gaining value. So even though you can purchase less with your money, right? If you could buy a gallon of milk for $1, now that gallon of milk costs you $2, then you've lost a dollar of purchasing power due to inflation. But if home prices stay stable during that time, then the real value of your home has lost value relative to where the dollar is at. So I hope that I hope that makes sense because that's a huge part of what Bank of America is talking about. And that's a huge part of this of this article here. So when we take a look at what happened in the 1980s, right? So inflation was high, the Federal Reserve spiked the Fed's funds rate, mortgage rates shot up, mortgage rates were really high. And then um, throughout that time, the housing market, you know, they say here did not hold up. For instance, home prices surged over 16% in 1979, then flatlined year over year as growth slowed to just 0.5% by 1982. So basically what they're saying is that home prices stayed flat and then ticked up slightly in 1982 from those three years, 1980, 1981, and 1982. So basically no home growth. And then at the same time, home sales dropped 54%. So basically home sales fell off a cliff. People weren't buying and selling homes and home prices stayed flat while inflation remained high. So similar to today, uh, home prices climbed 21% before flattening to zero, basically, this year. Now, they're slightly up year over year, but it's it's essentially flat, especially compared to what we've experienced. And when you consider that home prices decreased at the end of 2022, now they're up year over year, but essentially they're they're moving flat, as we'll take a look at later in this video with the um, with the charts out of Redfin. So that that's the big point of, of this Bank of America article and of what they're saying is that you're losing money, your dollar's losing value relative to inflation, just like it was in 1980, but home prices are, at least for now, remaining stable. And that's what happened in the, in the 1980s. The real value of your home went down because you, you lost purchasing power due to inflation, but the nominal value stayed the same and transactions fell off a cliff. So let me go into why a bit more why I don't think 
home prices are going to fall off a cliff. And something to note really quick before we get into this next article is that this is for the national housing market. And there, there really is no national housing market. Every market is different. Every market is unique, as we'll see when we move forward in this video. So your the specific market that you're looking in might vary different from where I am in Vermont, which is going to vary different from Miami compared to San Francisco. So although we, we look at data on a national level, what's going on in your specific market might vary drastically. So basically, what happened in 2008 where there was a lot of foreclosures, right? There are a lot of people lost their homes. Um, and a big part of that is, you know, people not being able to, to pay their mortgage payment, people losing equity in their home, not, you know, having a negative equity share. So when we take a look at the equity across the country, this is a, tr a map that shows the negative equity, how many borrowers owe more than their home is worth. So if you owe if you have a mortgage for $110,000 and your home's only worth $100,000, then you have negative equity. You owe more to the bank than your home is worth. So across the country, of course, I'm in Vermont. They don't have Vermont stats up here. I guess it's too small of a state for them to, to track. But basically across the country, we have relatively low home uh, negative home equity. So most people across the country um, have positive equity in their home, right? They have a little bit of cushion. Uh, if they were to sell their home, they wouldn't be taking a loss. It wouldn't be a short sale with the bank. Now there are some exceptions and I think these could be potential problem markets. Like if we look at Louisiana or Oklahoma or Iowa down or that in Louisiana, 6.8% of mortgage holders, which is a pretty high percentage have negative equity in their home. So if they fall on hard financial times and they have to sell, they're not going to be able to sell for a profit. They're going to have to either do a short sale or the bank is going to have to come by and foreclose on them um, in order for these home buyers, home borrowers, home owners to exit their property, to, to get out of the home that they're in. Now, as we scroll down here, this is a chart of the average equity gain year over year. So this is the amount in real dollar terms that people are gaining or losing in their homes. And the, the gray areas are negative. So we see California, the average homeowner lost around 50,000 in equity, Washington, 54,000. And then we have this big section in the middle of the country where people have gained a little bit of equity. So it hasn't gone up too much, but it also hasn't dropped. So about 9,000, um, 8,000 in Illinois, 6,000 in Missouri, um, up 12,000 in Michigan. We have these other states that have gained significant equity. New Hampshire up 21% or 21,000. So again, this is what I mentioned at the start of the segment is that there is no housing market. The, the market in Texas, the market in California is much different than what's going on in Alaska than in New Hampshire. So you have to be understanding about where, where you're purchasing a home, what's going on in that specific market or where you're selling a home, what, what's going on where you live because things are behaving very differently in different parts of the country. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about in this section here is the loan to value ratio. So if people are going to get foreclosed on and they're not going to sell their home, they likely, you know, they'll, if, if you're going to get foreclosed on, you're going to try to put your home on the market first. If you can't sell it and make a profit, then you're probably going to get foreclosed on, then you're probably in deep trouble. That's why those homes with negative equity share or those states with negative equity share um, are at a higher risk of experiencing higher foreclosures. But when we take at the when we take a look at the overall loan to value ratio across the country, this chart it, it breaks it down by percentages, but I did some rough math based on these numbers and roughly speaking about 60% of Americans, 59% or so, have more than 50% equity in their home. So home prices could decline by 25% and 60% of the country would still have positive equity in their home. Now, if we if we break it down even further and look at who has 25% equity in their home, so we have this, you know, you can see on the chart here, the 70 to 74%, anything below that line has less than 25% equity. So if home prices go down by 25%, they're going to have negative equity in their home and be in a really tough situation. The amount of those borrowers, the amount, the amount of people that have less than 25% equity makes up about 12% of the overall housing market. So a significant percentage that I think would, would seriously cause pain throughout the housing market, but that means 88% of homeowners would still be positive 
with their home equity and potentially could sell their home, even if home prices come down by 25% for a profit should they need to. So, you know, all, all interesting data to have. I think the, the more out of whack this gets and from everything I've seen about 2008, it seems like people were borrowing a lot and negative equity or, or the amount, the loan to value ratios that people had, the amount of equity that people had in their homes were very low. So if they experienced a downturn and they needed to sell their property, it was pretty difficult to do so. And the bank would, would foreclose on them. That's why we saw such a high default rate back in 2008. Um, so anyway, I hope this was helpful for you folks. I hope you got something valuable out of it. Um, there's a lot more equity. People have a lot more equity back than, um, than they did in 2008. And there, there's a lot of cushion. People have a lot of cushion in their home equity. Um, so, uh, anyway, all my contact information is in the description. If you're looking to buy or sell a home anywhere across the country, reach out to me directly. I'd be happy to help you, uh, leave a comment. I'd love to know what you think. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video.